there at Westgate at the very, like when you step out of the front and you go all the way to the west side, Yeah. I guess. You got to take west. a compass with me? Yeah, you can take a compass, <laughs> but no, that's where they have the Teslas there. And you get in the tunnel and you shoot down. They have um, that entrance. Then they have the one where it drops off right in center hall. Yeah. Then it goes all the way down and comes up at the back end of the uh, south hall. Awesome. So that's how you can get around really quick over at SEMA this year. We're, we're talking about SEMA, where the hotels we're staying at, and uh, Yancey and I will both be at SEMA this year. I'm going to be at the Lake Country booth, the Flex booth, the Grit Guard booth, and the Braun Brush booth, and you're going to be with? Yeah, I'm going to be there at the Optimum booth, and then I'll be floating around throughout the day, so I'll be all over the place covering the show. If you know me, I am like constantly running around at that show. So. All I know is that the show's over, I see you floating around a lot. <laughs> well, that's, that's what I do. Uh, thank you all for tuning in once again to another edition of Dr. Beasley's live detailing classes. And if you haven't already, like, share, and subscribe. Get notified about any time that this old man goes live. Um, yes, I said old because he has been trying to find his eyeballs here, but he did find them and he put them in, so it's all good. Um, but today, I mean, it looks like we have, or a actually you have a lot of stuff a lot going on. I mean, I got sandpaper here, I got sprays, I got polishes, I got yeah, I'm not doing anything by hand with these, but um, you have a lot. So before I jump that way, um, any news that we have, any announcements or anything like that? That's I do, up? but let's save them for the end. But uh, the, the right behind you is my whiteboard. And, for the uh, end, and he's going to go ahead and start writing. Uh, uh, just the big thing is, is I got a three-day class coming up the weekend after SEMA. Oh, okay, man, you're busy. And you can sign up for just the first two days, which is all paint correction and dry sanding or the third day, which is both sanding, or sign up for all three days. It's up to you. A lot of people want to take all three topics at one time. They're the most popular topics, yeah. the most profitable topics, and I bring in cool cars and big, ba big bad boats in bad condition. Well, you know, you got to think about it. If you're paying for flight, hotel, food, you yeah, might as well just do it in one get-go instead of one class here, one class there, and another class. And if you've never been to a Mike Phillips detailing class, I guarantee you, you better get your sleep <laughs> because you are going to need it. They definitely works you from done from sun up to sundown. There, for there's you. one chair in this facility, and uh, Yancey's daughter Chloe. Yeah, she it. has it. It's one chair, <laughs> so it's all hands-on. Cool stuff like this. By the way, this is a quirky car. Do you remember these? I my girlfriend that I had in high school, her mom drove one, and it was the um, turbocharged oh, one or yeah. whatever. It was the a hot. The X4 or something yeah, like that. It, 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 on it. Yeah, it was it was kind of cool. I was like wanted to drive it, but she never let me. But anyway, let me get back behind there. I'm going to turn the show over to you. And like I said, okay, hit the like button, hit the share. You know, you get you want to see this guy. This is a good topic. You know, uh, before we get started, I like to share a tip, and I'm going to share the tip by taking some stuff off this cart. So the first thing I'm going to do is let me just set this down. This is my personal red beast inside. Let me take uh, the Z1 off here in the pads. And this last week on the Dr. Beasley's YouTube channel, I shared, I shared a little tip that I like to show people. This is the, this is the Grit Guard Universal Detailing Cart. Now it comes with a pre-cut hole and a gasket and they, they show it and sell it with their pad washer. But what I like to do is Yancey actually made me this board and I got a little spacer here. And when I'm not using it to hold my bucket, which is right here, so this is what I usually use it for. I just use it for washing cars. So I'll come over here, get my grit guard insert, goes into the bucket, got my wash mitt, throw my wash solution in there. I can put my wheel cleaning, my tire cleaning chemicals and brushes, uh, all my car washing tools, foam guns, foam cannons, and I can push this around the car as I'm working on it. And here's the thing. Unlike all you people that don't have it, you've got to, every time you want to grab that wash mitt, you've got to bend over. Bend over. It's not a big deal, but think about it. The thing you do the most to your car is probably wash it. And so, treat yourself. Go out and buy the Grit Guard Universal Detailing Cart. You've got a place to put all your stuff, and you're not always bending over to pick up your wash mitt. I also share this with all my customers, because after I detail someone's car, the thing they're going to do the most is wash it. So I just show them. I show, hey, look, Bob, you know, you're getting older. I know you love your Corvette. Instead of bending over every time you want to grab that wash mitt, get yourself the Great Guard Detailing Car. So then I take this out when I'm not using it to wash cars. And I throw in this, it's basically a piece of press board, but I heard Doug Lamb at Great Guard's bringing it out with an accessory add on. Place it in here. And now I've turned my car wash cart into my detailing cart. Pretty cool, huh, Yancey? Yes, sir. 
And, uh, you know, when I teach my roadshow classes, you know, a lot of people might not believe this. I actually keep the original box this comes in. I break it down and pack it and I send it with me because I'm going to need a workstation when I'm teaching the class. So they're done that. One of my favorite products is the Universal Grit Guard Detailing Cart, but I use it both for washing cars and as a cart. Okay. So today we are talking about this really kind of to me is what I use the word quirky. This is a 1982 AMC Eagle. Now, if you remember a couple live classes ago, we had an AMC Pacer here. So it's kind of the cousin, but this thing was ahead of its time because it came out as a four wheel drive car. Can you show them the ground clearance of this thing? Oh yeah, it's definitely got some ground clearance. <laughs> And uh, the problem was, is when this thing came out, it didn't really get good gas mileage. We were going through the energy crunch, uh, gas prices were going up, and it was produced from basically, it was introduced in 70, 1979, but it was produced from 1980 to 1988. It did have good sales, but because of the gas issue, it just kind of went the way of the dodo bird. Uh, but now, it, it, most people say it was ahead of its time because nowadays, if you look at a lot of cars and a lot of SUVs, they offer all wheel drive, which is four wheel drive. So it was ahead of its time. Anyway, this one here, um, I'm not sure the mileage, just a little mileage, but this is the original paint. And it is, it looks like it's been scuffed and scratched. It's you got in, your light so that I can show It's that. in horrible, I think you can use the LEDs overhead, but heck yeah, let me get the powerful one here. Tell uh, me where yeah. Come down by the front. All right, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty hammered. It's <laughs> pretty hammered. And you know, I walked around and I inspected all the panels and every panel is like this. So that tells me that however it got scratched, it was probably by the same person doing the same thing, probably just washing it with uh, brushes or tatty wash mitts because it's uniformly ugly or uniformly scratched. Now, the, per the person that owns this, they actually, don't want to put a lot of money into restoring the paint. So this is kind of what I want to teach you guys. If you're going to own a detailing business, you need to have more than one package. I meet so many detailers when they start their business, they, detail, they do show car detailing to every car that comes to them. And they're not making money. They're not making any money. So you need multiple packages. You know, your first package is multiple step. That's where, you know, besides the normal things of washing a clay, and that's for anything you're going to do, you're usually going to use a compound and something strong like a wool pad on a rotary or aggressive pad on some kind of orbital as your first step. Then you're going to come back and perfect the paint with the second step. Then you're going to seal the paint, whether that's with a carnauba wax, a synthetic paint sealant, a ceramic coating, a graphene coating, but you're going to seal the paint. So that's multiple steps or what I always call show car detailing because that's how you're really going to get you know the majority of the defects out and have that true show car finish and you need to be charging for that now some of your customers they don't got the budget maybe their car doesn't even qualify as a show car maybe it's just a daily driver but they want to take care of it then you're going to do one step paint correction this would be for newer cars or cars in pretty good shape or people that don't care if you don't get all the swirls and scratches out because their budget isn't going to afford having you spend the extra time to do that compounding step so there's multiple step and one step then there's another category one step AIO paint correction. Now this shouldn't be confused with this because this is one step paint correction, but you're gonna put something on it to seal it. So it's kind of like two steps, but only one step on the paint correction, correction side. step you're talking about. Yeah, now this is one step AIO, so it's one and done. And that means the AIO has some kind of built-in protection Why component. Why don't you say what a AIO is just for those oh, people? AIO stands for all in one. And that means it's gonna, <clears throat> It's going to clean, polish, and protect door. It's going to remove defects, polish, and protect all in one step. And um, these, there's a plethora of what, in the old days, we called them a cleaner wax, okay? So there's a plethora of cleaner wax on the market. In fact, you know this, if you go to any auto parts store, most, not all, but most of the waxes or sealants or even the ceramics, anything that's on there is for Joe Consumer. And the chemists know that Joe Consumer ain't gonna do multiple steps, so they put a cleaner in whatever that product is. So by default, pretty much everything at a um, retail level like uh, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, Napa, is a cleaner wax. It might not say cleaner wax on it, but, but it's, it's going to clean, sort of polish, clean. protect. Like yeah. new finish is a good example. Yeah. Uh, remember them old commercials? <laughs> We're running through 55 car washes in the water. Yeah. Still water beads still up. beads. <laughs> okay. So, anyway, so that's what I'm going to show you today. It's, um, it's one of my favorite packages because it's basically one and done. Besides washing and clean, you're going to go over the car one time. You need a quality product, though, that uses uh, great. What are we going to be using? 
abrasive technology. What are we using? We're using the Dr. Beasley's Z1, which is a ceramic AIO. And then I'm gonna be applying this with, you wanna get this, this is the Red Beast inside, and this was personally signed by Flex and given to me at Auto Mechanica in Germany when they introduced the Red Beast inside. And instead of putting this in a glass case and showing it off, I said, nope, I'm using this thing. <laughs> so it's, it's been used on a lot of cars. Okay, so besides the chemical, we need to talk about the type of pad. Now this is a, is a light foam cutting pad and you can kind of feel the sharpness and it's very stiff. This is a foam polishing pad. It's a lot easier to compress, much smoother to the feel when they're dry. And this is a foam finishing pad. So it's very, very soft. In fact, this morning I was using this to put some makeup on. That joke never gets old. <laughs> Because it's so soft and it conforms everything. So normally when you're using the AIO, and this is important, you want to do a test spot, but you want to make sure that you're using the right pad. Because if you're using too sharp of a pad and say the paint is soft, the pad itself can leave marring, not the abrasive technology, the pad. And this is where test spots come in. Yeah, this is where test spot comes in. Now, uh, in the internet world, I see a lot of guys always just recommending, use a foam cutting pad with your AIO. Well, apparently they've never worked on anything soft before because I've, I've taught this live in classes where I've shown just the pad on black paint because they'll show everything. Uh, will leave marring. You know, it's a, if, if, if you buff out a car with a foam cutting pad and a great AIO and leave marring and you got to come back and rebuff it, your one step just went to two steps because you weren't thinking. So always do a test spot. Now, I've already done a test spot on this car and I found that the foam polishing pad, it removed 95% of the defects. And that's kind of what I'm shooting for. But I, I do want to touch on this. Anytime you're talking to a customer about your different packages, if they are interested in a one-step AIO, because that's usually your cheapest package, um, you have to lower their expectations or at least set their expectations. Let them know you're not getting everything <laughs> You're out. not getting every real scratch out. If they go, no, I want them all out, well, fine. But you're up here to my multiple step. You know, so here's the difference is the price. And if they say, well, no, then you just want to make sure because a lot of people, they don't do this part. A lot of detailers don't do this part. And so their customers are let down. They look at the results and go, well, there's still some scratches. You know, well, look, Bob, you know, uh, you know, we talked about this. You got to remind them. Anyway, uh, the Z71, this uses spherical abrasive technology, which is unique to the Dr. Beasley's line. It's available in eight ounce tubes, 32 ounce bags, and you can also get pour off bottles if you get the larger bags. So tell you what, let's just quit the talk. And I've already washed and clayed this car. And by the way, I'm gonna just do this one perfectly rectangular section here because I'm saving this car for the November class. My students are going to finish this car, including doing some Dr. Color Chip touch-up paint because Tony Pando is gonna be here to go over the Dr. Tony. Color. Yeah, to go to the Dr. Uh, uh, color Chip system for doing rock chip repair. There's a lot of doctors in this car. <laughs> Dr. Beasley, <laughs> Dr. Color Chip. You know, um, one of the last classes, it was the Pacer class, Someone came up in the YouTube comments and said, how come you didn't do a two foot by two foot section? And I thought that's a great question because if you look at the back of anybody's product or buffer, it always says work a two foot by two foot section. And I answered him very politely and I says, well, here's what I did is I let the panel be my guide and I went from the raised body line in the middle to the next raised body line and that was a kind of a smaller section, but it would not have worked to run the buffer over that smooth flat section, then went down into a curve and back up to a high part. It just doesn't work that way. You let the panel talk to you, or as I like to say, let the panel be your guide. So, um, so in this case, I'm just gonna stay between this high point right here, the edge right here, the chrome trim right here, and the chrome trim right up there. And then my class will finish up the car. Okay, so shake well. Well, that works for you now, doesn't it? And then these are concentrated products. So I always, I really hate when someone says use a pea-sized drops because here's the deal. I've never known you to use a pea-sized drop. <laughs> you need a film on the surface as you're buffing. The film is two things. It's abrasive technology and lubrication. You know, a lot of times people forget that the whole reason we're doing this is to make it look beautiful. So you can't just throw abrasive technology. I mean, imagine just throwing sand up there and buffing. It's not gonna look good. There's no lubrication. Of course, sand's a horrible abrasive technology. But the, the point is, is you know, you need something, the carrying agent to also lubricate the surface. So um, I'm gonna give this a little mist here. And why'd you do that? Because I'm testing a product and I thought I would show everybody I'm testing a product. And so far I'm liking what I'm testing. So now I'm gonna just take and spread my product out. I'm gonna use a low I'm gonna use a low speed for that, and then I'm gonna make eight section passes and I'll quit talking. So okay.
Okay, so I've, all I've done is spread the product out, but here's my point. I have a film of product and it's lubrication and abrasive technology. Now, one of the things, everybody knows I'm a flex guy. One of the reasons I like the flex eight millimeter gear driven polisher is because you can go faster with it and you can knock out huge sections. I mean, just, I, sometimes I tackle whole half of a hood at one time and demonstrate that. But the thing about this is because it's gear driven, no matter how hard I push down, okay, no matter how hard I push down, I'm not gonna get that pad to stall out or quit spinning or quit oscillating or quit rotating. And here's what that means. Unlike a free spinning tool is I can push hard, push the abrasives into the paint, make them take little bites out and go faster. And my personal style is, yeah, I am lazy, but I also wanna go as fast as I can. I wanna do as I call it, get in and get out. So let me count out six, eight section passes. We'll wipe off and take a look. And another tip that I always like to share is count your section passes out loud so you don't forget where you're at. You can cut an hour out of your buffing time because most of us forget where we're at. Okay. Okay, up to the set. That's one. There's six solid section passes. And what I, I stopped is because what I like to show people is for your last pass, we're gonna bring up the pressure. Remember, we're trying to create beauty here. Polishing paint is not a grinding process, it's an art form. We add the human elements of care and passion about what we're doing. So now I'm gonna bring, I know other guys teach to push down hard the whole way through the cycle. I just, I never bought into that. Because you're removing paint particles, that means you're pushing, you're grinding those back into the paint. So bring your pressure up. That is just the weight of the tool. Okay. And this is interesting. I was, I was going to say, it's like you might want to tell them why the term <laughs> dark color there. Single stage paint, you know? I don't even try and I get to work on all these cool cars that have single stage paint. And I bring them into my classes so you get a chance to work on them too. And um, the thing about that is, is, you know, even though a lot of people aren't gonna work on something old, a lot of new cars could have single stage urethane. I, I always bring in modern cars and some of the local body shops around here, they use um, single stage urethane paint. So it is a high tech paint system but it's um, got no clear coat over the top of it. Okay, so Yancey, if you want to come down and look at this. Let's get your light. Um, there's still it's, some it's rids. Underneath. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Never mind. There's still some rids. Okay, we'll get to that in a moment. But, I, I mean, put a number on here, here. Let me have. Put a number on here, 95, 100%. Right, it's, it's not 100, but. Well, let's go over here. That's before. <laughs> yeah. That's after. Huge difference in just Before, one step. After. All right, you can take that. Okay. So one step and boom. Uh, and I could go around the car just as fast and just knock this out. I'm gonna save it for my class though. But anyway, that's the benefit to a one step 
AIO, and of course with ceramic you're leaving behind ceramic protection instead of uh, carnauba wax or some sort of synthetic polymer. So it's a more high-tech, longer-lasting uh, ceramic protection than old school stuff. But, uh, but yeah, I'm a big fan of doing one steps. But most important, I just wanted to share that because, um, you know, I've been in this industry a long time and I see a lot of detailers as they come up, they make the mistake, and I know you seasoned detailers would agree, they make the mistake of doing show car or multiple step detailing to every car that comes into their shop or if they're mobile, to every car they show up to. And while that's noble, you know, it's great to have a, a strong work ethic and want to do your best work for everybody, you'll end up working for pennies, you know. Uh, you want to try to shoot for like a hundred bucks an hour in your detailing business model, no matter what you're doing, just to pay overhead, uh, product, products, accessories, wear and tear on tools and pads, microfiber towels. So you need to uh, keep that in mind. And if you're not doing this for money, by the way, if you're just an enthusiast, you know, um, most households have two or three cars, maybe a motorhome or boat. And say you've got a, a motorhome, maybe you don't want to do multiple step to something that's 40 feet long down one side, 40 feet deep down their side and the front and back cap. Well, here's a way to knock it out in one step and still do, you know, create professional results. Or maybe the kids' cars, you want to detail them, you don't want to do multiple step, they're not going to take care of it in most cases. You know, for the wife though, you know, do the multiple step. <laughs> yeah, but unless but this has that. application, this idea of having different steps, different packages to not just professional detailers doing this for money, but for the enthusiast too that has multiple cars to take care of. All right. Now, um, I remember you having something about another car that's coming up next week, and I do have some pictures on here. Do okay, you want yes. to talk about that? Yeah, or? so uh, one of the things we want to try to do is try to present the topics in this class that's going to be next week, so you know ahead of time. But I have a gentleman, he's a local guy, he's got a beautiful 1967 Camaro convertible. It is pretty. Oh, look at it's that. It's a pretty car. It was just here today. That's where that picture came from. And he got his name from uh, Kitty's Classics, a local restoration store to come give me a visit. So what he has is he's got five bird dropping etchings in the paint. And this is where... Uh, Ooh! Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, that's uh, ugly. Um, I, I wrote the definition for bird dropping etch uh, um, etchings a couple years ago. I can't. One of them is this, where the paint is wrinkled, and one of them is where the paint is stained, because they're two different types. Well, this one, let me put it back up there. That one is wrinkled and stained. That's what I was going to say. It looks like a little bit of both. <laughs> it's pretty nasty. Now, follow me. Here's the deal. This is a sweet car. And um, he doesn't want the bird dropping etchings. So, and he understands that I only have so much to clear. Even though it's a custom paint job, I only have so much to work with. So he's given me the green light to go ahead and machine sand these and buff them out. And if I do go through the clear, it's okay. He'll have it repainted. If I don't, knock on urethane. <laughs> uh, then he's happy camper, you know, because he doesn't want to repaint it. Because then you got to deal with color match issues. It's a color, it's a custom color anyway. But anyway, what I brought this up here is this is some stuff that we show in all of our classes. This is the Eagle Abrasives by Kovacs dry sanding system. They make one of the widest range of sanding discs for both vacuum extraction for dust and um, non-hole sanding discs, like I have here. If you're not doing vacuum extraction. And they come in six, five inch, and three inch sizes. And actually, they got some one inch too. So, what I'm gonna be trying to do is follow the sage advice of using the least aggressive process to get the job done. Smart. And I'm just gonna take and throw a 2500 sanding disc on, bring it down, and just choo 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 choo, sand a little bit, inspect, sand a little bit. As soon as I see where it's gone flat, then I'll start buffing out with the NSP 150 wool pad on a rotary and see if we can't fix this thing and get this customer so he's happy with this Camaro again. Mm -hmm. So that's what all this is for. And, you know, just um, as an aside, um, uh, I do show this. I got a class coming in November. We're going to be using the same system on a 1965 Ford Galaxy with custom paint and a lot of orange pill. So we'll be using the 1500 followed by 2500. And that, that takes a lot of focus. I try to teach people this all the time. But when you start out with a lower grit, even 1500 to some people is not low, but it's a low grit. Everywhere you sound the 1500, you got to come back and refine with the next grit or you're going to spend a lot of time buffing. So it means focus on the task at hand. Yeah. Don't be thinking about what you're going to be doing later on during the day <laughs> yeah. because that's when things will go wrong. So yeah. just focus. focus and focus. we will have the six millimeter pixie drive units because we show the pixie for doing three inch sanding. And uh, I didn't grab this, but you want to grab it. You know, see the, grab the really cool um, gr uh, flex 
cordless sander. Oh, over here. Yeah, there's that one right there in front of you. It's already got a six-inch disc on it. So we just used these up at another class in Wisconsin, in fact, and we used them this last week, and two weeks ago I had a class here, but this is a cordless DA sander. So no pneumatic hose, no electric cord. You just have the freedom to sand down, remove orange peel, and it's a really nice tool. So there you go. That's what we got coming up. All right, so, you're gonna hang there? All right, you're gonna hang there? Yep. All right, let's bring up a couple of these. Uh, the voice from the nether here. Uh, thank you, if you have any questions, get them in right now, because we're taking Q&A right now. So I'm gonna go through some of the comments and give you a little bit of time to type, type, type. So hold on one sec. Um, we have our buddy, Humberto. He's first always from Puerto here. Rico. First yeah. from Puerto Rico. First I swear that Puerto guy Rico. has more first on YouTube or on everybody's comments than anybody. But <laughs> hey, how you doing there? Uh, then <laughs> Grant. Grant knows me. Today's show is powered by NOS. Only today, it's not. It's Arizona tea. I had the NOS earlier. Cool. Uh, let's go down. Okay, yeah, this is the power of what do you call it? What you see before and what you actually, what can be hidden from the camera. Uh, we have Mario coming on. It actually looks shiny on video. Thanks for a close-up on how bad it is. Yeah. So, I mean, oh, yeah. a lot of people, they, they, if they were to look at that, you know, they would think from a distance, oh, wow, look at how shiny it is. But until you get it under what you call the um, cruel master. And, and going live is the real deal. There's no mock-up here. That yeah, I, I, I'm, I, yeah, I may be good at video, but <laughs> I don't got the software to make it work that uh, good. Before, you, before we end it, make sure we pan over and show what's sitting over here. Oh, I will. So, I will. Yeah. I will. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I like this one. Nagali Mobile Detailing. I made it. Woohoo! Say hi to him. Hey, thanks for joining <laughs> us. Yeah. So, okay, we have Mike G coming in here. Z1 does a good job of removing defects. Um, oh, thank you. I think this was Victor coming in, chiming in. Um, for those of people that don't know what RIDS is, it is random, isolated, deeper scratches. It's. Uh, you know, so when we talk about defects, we have to have a common language so we know what we're talking about. That's why uh, a week or two ago, um, we published an article I just wrote, uh, the difference between holograms and swirls. So our hologram swirls, well, they're, they can be circular scratches, but holograms are a distinct scratch pattern imparted in the paint by a rotary polisher and typically a wool pad. It's the fibers, or, or if you're using caveman abrasive technology, then it's both fibers and the technology. But swirls are just random scratches, and then rids are scratches that will have usually be a straight line. So maybe someone stuck something on here, like a bag of groceries, and pulled it off. So the car is full of swirls, but then you find these deeper scratches. And what happens is when you buff out the shallow ones, all of a sudden the rids stand out like a sore thumb. That they do. Yeah. All right, let me come back on here. We have Sarah coming on during polishing. Do you ever stop in between and recheck the paint thickness? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> I know a lot of people, some people are probably um, surprised by that. Um, I do have a paint thickness gauge, but look. I bet a lot of that has to detail, <laughs> like that would um, be based on like if you're doing a high-end exotic that's like multi-million dollar no. Bugatti. No, not really. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Mike's like, no, I'm no, not go really. <laughs> look, you're, when you buff out a car, you're, you're gonna hopefully got a, a plan you know, if someone's bringing you a high-end car like a Bugatti Veyron and they want every scratch out, first of all, why does it have scratches in it? Isn't it brand new? But, you know, we all know that's not the fact. But you're going to use common sense. And probably the most important thing is great abrasive technology. Um, you know, there's two kinds of abrasive technology, by the way. There's great and everything else. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't use that word. So great means it'll remove a defect without leaving its own defect behind. And everything else will remove defects, but it leaves its own defect behind. So now you get caught in a catch-22 system. So um, there's no reason to check your paint thickness. And the, the other thing about checking paint thickness, look, I detailed cars for 20, 25 years before paint thickness gauges were a thing, okay? And, and I didn't buy anybody paint jobs. I just used great products, good technique. I focused on the task at hand. But, you know, keep in mind that paint's thin, so just use common sense and you'll be okay. So you do it that way pretty much due to your experience that you have, where I think maybe... People might think it's the same as like using rubber gloves when they run a polisher. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's kind of 
kind of, kind of trendy. I mean, I, I don't, funny. I don't know. I mean, I, I really, do, I don't have a paint thickness gauge, and I've never went through, so I don't know. So, three mils over What's here. Our, you're out of frame. Two point nine mils. The side I did buff's thinner than the side I did buff, and to me, that's really thin paint. No, that's, that's the protection that you left behind by Z one. Oh, could be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could be the strength protection. Amped All right, up. no, hold on. Let, let's go on here. We're getting a little off of there. Uh, we have Kirby coming in here, our buddy Kirby. Afternoon, Mike and Yancey, and the viewers, too. <laughs> uh, Mike G, he's coming back on here. I experimented wiping off Z1 with Bead Hero, and it seemed to work well. Yeah, it, uh, Bead Hero, plus it leaves behind more strength protection. To tell you the truth, I have Bead Hero here, and... Uh, when my class gets done with this car, that is one of the things they're going to do. They're going to take in, after using the Z1, they're going to go ahead so they can experience the, the uh, Beat Hero, you know, hands-on experience. They can go ahead and just apply that. And one of the cool things about that is um, after you apply it, unlike a lot of products, it actually does increase the slickness of the finish besides uh, amping up the hydrophobic ceramic protection. All right. Where are you going? Hang on. Sorry, right there. keep moving on, Yancey. But me and Yancey, okay. I just want to touch on something. I'm going to walk back here. We always uh, think it's funny when we see guys, you know, and they're wearing, they're wearing their gloves to hold the polisher. Yeah. And like, really? Man up. Get some calluses. You know? <laughs> Remember, we, we were going to make a shirt of that. Remember, we, uh, we right. had a man up. Get, make calluses. Man up. Yeah. And so here's, here's my glove, and okay, now, now I can look like a detailer. I got my glove on. It's so ridiculous. All right, all right moving <laughs> on. Now that half the internet's mad at you. Um, Grant Autry, 100% of the new kids trying to, do, trying to do show car finish for $6. Yep. 100%. 100%. 100%. Have your packages, you know, have your packages. Yep. Uh, then we have Shine Your Light Detailing. Hey, everybody. Uh, da, 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 da. oh, director says, okay, this, my, oh, director of success, chime in here, Nano LS10 and Z1 is a primo combo, hold on, you didn't get my, primo combo, <laughs> uh, you can do a quick coat of Z1, then, I think a quick coat of Z1, then refine with a glorious gloss of S10, yep. which I is like also this, safe. Yeah. LS10 is a good product too. Uh, oh, we have Tossy coming in here. Hey guys, any idea where I can buy the first polishing machine he used? Pretty sure that was a 3401. We carry this at uh, drbeasleys.com. There you Always go. support the people that help you. I wrote this article about a year ago called uh, Your Profit Our Squat. <laughs> and uh, I know it's kind of a dumb name, but for years I've always you know, help people figure things out and then they go to some other place to buy their stuff. And the analogy I used is when I go out to dinner and I get a great service from the waitress or the waiter, I don't leave, go to some strange place and give that guy the tip. I give the tip where I got the good service. And, and help, educational stuff is like good service. You know, yeah, you might be able to find this for $10 cheaper somewhere else, but you got your help from Dr. Beasley's. So your All profit, right. our All spot. All right, and Tossie, right here, Right there is the link that you can use to go get that polisher. Thank you, Victor. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring this back up. Um, I love this. I love this one right here. This one right here is awesome. Tony Stapleton, you answered every question I had. Thanks, Mike. I have a Tesla. Hopefully you're having a good non-flammable day with it. Uh, brand new, I'm going to use the Z1. So, hey. Yeah. In the comments, you come back to this video and let us know how it turned out. Because Teslas, they have soft paint. If, if you I know, I've never worked on a Tesla. I want to say they have soft paint. So, I've worked on so many interesting cars, and I, I want to work on a Tesla. It just, it just hasn't come my way. I don't really go out and actively seek work. I just kind of take what comes my way. You know what came by besides that 67 Camaro today? A 68 Cougar XR7. How cool is that? You know? that, I'm sorry, I was reading, That's and okay. I was totally ignoring what you were and, saying. And, but, <laughs> but, but I have a brand new Porsche coming in this weekend. Yeah. So no, that's a, cool. It's always a mix, you know? Okay, here's one for you. Yes, the voice from the nether, because I'm going to, I'm 
I don't want side profiles, so bear with me. <laughs> um, had a brand new Genesis with a smiley face scratch on the hood. I measured 3.5 on the paint. I turned down the job. Did I do the right thing? Paint was too thin on a year old car. Yeah, you, you probably would have never got that out without going through the clear. That, and, and look, here's the deal. Just be honest with the customer. Because in most cases, what they're going to want is they're going to want it completely removed. We're talking a paint job. You know, and here's what I oftentimes do with people. I say, well, tell you what, you know, here's a couple local body shops, drive down there, show them the damage, get an estimate for what it's going to cost to repair. And their eyes will get really big on what it'll cost to repair a, a, just a panel, so like the hood, with no rust or dents, just to repaint it. And you're, you're talking in the thousands in most cases, you know, unless it's a cheap, you know, fly by night Mako kind of place, but just to paint the hood. And then all of a sudden they might go, well, you know, I'm going to give this guy a chance at it. Maybe just get it good. It'll be good enough, you know, especially if they're going to sell it or trade it in or something. So it just depends. But I, I tell you, here's, here's where this comes from. All my life, I've had people come to me and say, hey, I got a scratch in my finish. You know, I think I'm going to sand it out. A scratch in your a, fish or finish? A scratch in their finish. In okay, their I thought you said fish there for no, a moment. No, scratch in their finish, scratch in their paint. And so, you know, usually I go, well, have you ever sanded paint before? Do you have any sandpaper? Do you have a rotary polisher to pull your sanding marks out? And the answer is usually no, no, and no. But then they want to try anyway. Then, you know, within about a week, they come back up and say, hey, you know, where I was sanding and buffing, uh, the scratch is gone, but the paint looks dull, which is a sign that they went through the clear coat. Now to fix it, they got to repaint that panel where they should have just got it good, improve it, don't remove it, and moved on in life. So that's a new one. Improve it, don't remove it. He yeah. has never said that before. <laughs> a new one, you heard it here first, yeah, just, people. But, but you know, Believe but, me, I've heard them all. But so what I do nowadays is when someone comes to me and says, I'm thinking about sanding my car to remove this scratch, you know, a key scratch or the smiley face scratch, I say, go get an estimate first because most people, all they know is how to push the button and start the car. They have no concept about anything else with the car and especially the paint and how thin it is. Okay, let me bring this one up. Uh, Show. Okay. Shine, shine your light. Detailing. Uh, we need to have a talk. Still haven't tried any Beasley's products and I've been buffing for years. Where you been? <laughs> Come over to the doctor's it's, side. It's very different abrasive technology. You know, um, the, the, here's a, something that most people don't know. A majority of, here's the three things that have abrasive technology. So AIOs, all in ones, polishes and compounds, okay? Leather and vinyl dressings don't have abrasive technology. So those are the three primary categories. And most of the companies out there, they don't make their own abrasive technology. So they have to go buy it from what's called an abrasive company or a powder company. And uh, two, two that I can think of are uh, St. Gobain and Faro. And what this kind of means is everybody's buying their powders or their grains not everybody, but most people from the same companies. Then, then when they get them, then they create the formula. Now the formula is the liquid parts to suspend it. And this can be different solvents, polishing oils, fillers, scents. Um, so the, they are different, but the base part that does the cutting can actually be very same, the same or very similar. But Dr. Beasley's is very unique to just Dr. Beasley's. Okay, got another one coming in here uh, from Kyle. Do you machine sand? the rounded fenders are in old 40s and 50s cars, or do you switch to a hand for those areas? Also, motorcycle fenders, fairings, etc. Well, the only time I really sand paint is if it's been repainted. And, and, and a good question, but here's something I practice and I preach. Someone calls me, and this happened recently, hey, you know, we, we, we want to get this car sanded down. Okay, do you know the painter? Yes, I do. Can I get his phone number? So uh, a few months ago, I, I did a complete dry sand, two-step dry sand job on a 1967 California Special painted a beautiful metallic aquamarine green. And uh, I was able to call the painter and he said that, Mike, I put three heavy coats of clear. He says, you got plenty of room there to sand. Now I got the confidence to start out with something like 1500 grit. Um, if I don't, if I can't talk to the painter, then usually I'm going to probably shy away from the job. The last three, the last four cars I've sanded down, 69 GTO, 69 Charger, 56 Chevy Bel Air, and a 67 Mustang. You know, that's not bad for the last year. Custom paint jobs, custom cars. Um, I was able to talk to the painter every single time. But you have to start by saying, do you know who painted your car? Yeah. Yes. Or if they say no, then, you know, hey. 
Uh, it's it's a what's the word an, an app shoot. It's an app shoot. Uh, so I, you know when we talk about it, when I'm sanding cars like you said from the 50s and 60s, in most cases they've been resanded. You know I had a, a 1960 Cadillac in one of my most recent classes that the class completely sanded down, and uh, it had a custom paint job on it. It was actually single stage lacquer, and we 1500, 2500 compound polish didn't go through anywhere. But we also did not have the opportunity to talk to the painter. But man, you could look at this and see someone just dump the paint on it, and the guy that owned it said hey I can't live with it like this so if we can't fix it I'm gonna repaint it anyway so you always want to uh, check and see all your options in, uh, okay. before you start sanding all right let's bring up this one right here uh, James S super beast good tool of choice as well yeah you know um, I have a super beast is back over in the corner I got a couple of them uh, but here's the deal, and that's a good question. I've answered this question a lot. So let me just tell you, there's, there's three beasts. There's the, the original beast, the XC341 VRG. There's the Supa beast. And then there's the C beast. The letter C in front of beast stands for Cordus, the Cordus beast. So the original has the most power and the most, by this I mean the most RPMs and OPMs. So listen to this on sick. I mean, that's... That's enough power for anything you got to handle, and if it isn't, then you really need to be going to rotary. When you go to the Supa Beast, it drops down by a couple hundred OPMs and RPMs. When you go to the C Beast, a couple more OPMs and RPMs. So, um, which tool is best for you kind of depends on your style. For me, I, I used to use the Supa Beast a lot, but nowadays, God, every time someone brings me a car like this one over here and this one here, they're just they're hammered, and I want to get in and get out. So I want to go as fast as I can. So I want the Beast. And I know that Flex has been trying to discontinue the Beast. In fact, in most parts of the world, you can't even order it anymore. You have to get the Super Beast. But in America, they, keep, they, they sell so well, they, it's just like you cannot take it away from us. And of course, Chris Metcalf over at Flex says part of the reason is because of me. So I'll take that hit. I'm always showing people a tool that'll get the job done, help them like me to get in, get out, keep their quality pro grade. Quality programming? Yes. Were well, we going to take a look-see at this one? Yeah. Okay. I am getting set up for that. Just one second. Okay. It's orange. Tell me about it. Speak to me. Okay. That is a red. <laughs> I think red. It might be kind it's of a, a red orange. orange. Right. I don't know what color it is. Orange. I'm colorblind. That is a 1960 Plymouth Valiant. And if you look at the back fins, the thing that really made this thing quirky is back in the 50s and the 60s, all the fins were vertical. Notice how these flare out horizontal. And so it really gave it a unique look, of course, the, the faux or the fake uh, spare tire carrier on the back. Uh, but a very quirky car, and I'll tell you, this is the finest example I've ever seen in my life. But if you, if you get in a position where you can see the swirls on the paint, I'll even walk over and help you. The, the, uh, like need, like this car. It is completely swirled out, and they want Here, give me that. they want to take this to a car show and show it off. So um, I'm going to be doing the paint correction personally on this car. Um, I've already done a test spot. It is single stage, and so you know people always ask me, Mike, you ever get nervous working on these types of cars? And the answer is, heck yeah, I do. I don't want to create a primer spot on here because I went through the single stage. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to attack it probably with, um, you know, I did my test spot with Z1. It's back there on the trunk lid somewhere and it removed about 90% of the scratches. But I'll tell you, here's what I'm going to tell the owner is I'm not buying you a paint job. So I'm not shooting for hundred percent perfection. If you want that, you know, I'll either need some kind of release or take it somewhere else because I do not want to be the guy that creates a primer spot on this car. It's just too nice. And the other thing is, is to be honest, if you create a 100% flawless finish on a car, most people don't have the skills to maintain it. They don't, keep, <laughs> they don't keep their towels clean. That's the reason why it turns out like that. That's why they look like this. They get wiped down with dusters. And so. Oh, California duster. Come on. That's amazing. I hear it's making a comeback. <laughs> does that look pretty good? No, it does. Yeah. It, it does. Came out good. But you do, I mean, obviously we do have, we have some reds in yeah, there, but I mean, reds. for what this car is, definitely a lot better than 100% what it 100% improvement off. for a one-step ceramic AIO package. And you're in and done. And that was, what, six passes? Seven, seven, seven passes. Seven passes, yeah. and you're probably three minutes. Uh, yeah, so a huge, you, you had to think, huge. Yeah, you to think how fast you'd be able to do this car. You'd be able to yeah. kick this car out yeah, in it, less than an hour. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, right before SEMA last year, I buffed out a 19, God, what was it? It was a 1967 Oldsmobile 442 hardtop. So everything had paint, and from start to finish, three hours. 
three hours, I, besides washing and claying. I did, I did a water swash and clayed it. Three hours, start to finish. That includes all the chrome and the glass. Look at you go. Boom, boom, boom. Get in, get out. Well, part of it is turn your phone off. Turn your phone off. You turn know. the music up. <laughs> turn the music up. Drink five noses. Go. Then go. Then go, yeah. All right, so. so with that being said, I would like to say thank you to each and every one of you that tuned in today. Um, I'll be here all the time. Don't worry about this guy next to me. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> You'll be here yeah. next week for that car. Oh, no, the, the, the Camaro. Yeah, Camaro's next week. Bird dropping, etching, removal. Okay. Then after that, then we, it's all the big SEMA prep and everything like that. So stay tuned to their socials and they'll be letting you know about the lives coming up. Are you guys doing live out of SEMA? Um, I, you know, that's a good question. I'm, I'm going to be there. Victor? And I'm, I'm going to be alive. Victor? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, anyway, so just stay tuned for the upcoming. We give you one week out, so next, you know, next week you know that it's going to be the Camaro with the bird drop, which is going to be an amazing one because that hopefully it, it does turn out. You know, I mean, it, it is what it is. It's pretty deep. From that picture, it looked pretty bad. So, yeah. so stay tuned for that because everybody runs across those. And I, if I you love get, a challenge. So. You love a challenge. I know he does. Yeah, so. And thank you for tuning in about Z1. If you need to know where to get this, just go to drbeasleys.com. The three-day detailing class coming up is Friday, November 10th, Saturday, November 11th, Sunday, November 12th. The first day is all paint correction on cool cars that are hammered and jacked up. And I also cover glass polishing, both topical, subsurface, engine detailing. Hey, so you need a car for that. I have a lady <laughs> no. that has a car for that. Well, they talk to me about it at the show. No. But it's really hands-on. We cover more topics than in our class on planet Earth. The next day is machine dry sanding only. Now I'm going to incorporate machine or hand sanding. So blocking out first, covered by machine dry sanding. Because they're both good skills you need to know how to do. Just and like that guy asked. Yep. When do you switch over to do it by hand? And then we're going to take the skills we learned on Friday. So Because I start my classes out the rotary. Yep. First thing on Friday morning. Yeah, you don't get no easy tool. You get the beast. <laughs> well, thing, not even the beast. The, the rotary. The rotary. So you take the things you learned on Friday and implement them after the sanding on Saturday. And then Sunday, I got a 24-foot sea hunt, dark blue, white with oxidation. And we're going to machine sand it, wool pad compound it, polish it out, and ceramic coat it. So it's a very hands-on intense class. And you can get more information by going to drbeasleys.com. Or anytime you want to give me a call and ask me another question, my personal cell phone number, 760-515-0444. And you wonder why you get so many spam I hardly calls. get any calls. So. <laughs> All right, so with that being said, thank you all. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell, hit subscribe, all that other like, follow. You know what to do. And uh, actually, you know, in the comments, why don't you put hashtag Z1 if you guys have used Z1. Yep. All right, so with that, I think that you need to finish out the rest of the car. <laughs> my class is going to finish out the car. No, you're finishing out the rest of the car. No, I did my spot. So. <laughs>